Here we have a disassembled pyro fuse from a Tesla Model S battery. So it would normally live inside this orange container with the electronics all in there and these two big ass terminals and that would be up and under in there. So that's where your fuse lives on the Tesla Model S. That's at the very top of the pack. Um, so, I have got this one, which is a known good from a 75 kilowatt hour pack. And I've got this one, which is from one of these 200 kilowatt hour packs down here that's blown. So I guess I should say the pyro fuse element itself is this. So basically, on a signal from the electronics, a little explosive charge goes off, similar to SRS airbags and seatbelt tensioners and what have you, and breaks, actually physically breaks the connection. So it gets set told to go off by these electronics. These electronics know to tell it to switch it off by measuring the current through the battery here across a shunt. A shunt is just basically a resistor, so if you know a little bit about Ohm's law, V equals IR. So if you want to know I, which is the current, you set it such that the voltage, V equals IR, so I equals V over R, and you set the resistance such that you have a useful amount of volts across here. Normally it's about 50 millivolts, I believe. So basically when there's, on this I think it'll be about 1500 amps going across, you'll have whatever your voltage threshold is, which will go into the electronics. The electronics will go, oh my God, stop this, and send a signal to this one here, sorry, this one here, which will then blow the fuse. Now, the fuse on the 100 kilowatt hour and on the 75 kilowatt hour is the exact same part number down here. So I think that I can use the same fuse. I can swap the good 75 kilowatt hour fuse into the 100 kilowatt hour assembly. The fuse itself, the overall thing, has got a different part number. So here we are on a, let's get it over here. One oh seven and a one oh eight. So yeah, different part numbers. Now, I believe that the difference will be in the programming on the set points for these. So I reckon if I keep the hundred kilowatt hour fuse uh, electronics, but swap the fuse over, then it should be okay. The thing I'm not sure about is whether these things will fire a second time. I've measured the voltage on these cells. It's the hundred kilowatt hour is actually higher than the cells on the 75 kilowatt hour. So these are obviously okay, the cells, but yeah, does this send any kind of a flag? It's a dumb device in that it doesn't connect to anything else in the car. It's totally self-contained, which is sort of a worry because eventually these will go flat and then your fuse won't work. So uh, yeah, you know, when you've got a 20 year old Tesla, when you're um, an old timer, at your um, classic car show, getting laughed at by all the people who've got their iron drive or whatever it is, their um, bending of space-time reality transport, just like we laugh at the V8 guys now, you might find you haven't got your safety and there's no way for it to communicate. Maybe when the battery vol voltage goes below a certain level it blows the fuse so you're forced to get another one, who knows? But yeah, that's a slight worry. Anyhow, big digression. What we're going to do is we're going to use this beautiful little adjustable power supply of mine to put some voltage in to the shunt side of things and to see if this then goes pop. And so we're going to be measuring here. So it's really not going to need much current. 0.1, yeah. Not even sure I should let it have that much. Yeah, 
it'll be all right. Yeah, famous last words. Thing is, I can only do this in hundredths of a volt, so I'm expecting it'll go bing straight away. So let's get things going. So, volts. Let's make it keep a hold of the max. Connection here. Let's put that connection in there. Bring this around. Is there a chance that we can see both screens without flare? Everything is wired up nicely. There's no short circuit there. That's where it wants to be. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm letting it have Nope, here we go, let's let it have one volt, point one volt. Okay, I don't appear to be getting anything there. And, oh, come on Neil, you didn't think the ergonomics through, did you? Not exactly this old Tony, are you? Something happened there on 0.05 of a volt, I thought. Oh, we got a green light, uh, we got a yellow light here. Interesting, so if I turn that back down, whoa, so. On 0.01 of a volt, nothing. 0.03, nothing, 0.04, nothing. 0.05, there we go, 0.06 of a volt, and this guy here is now complaining. However, I'm allegedly not seeing anything out of here, which is a bit of a worry. So I turn that off, light goes out, turn it on again, light comes back on. Okay, so it's obviously sensing a problem, but it's not obviously doing anything about it. Now, why is that? Oh, it went to minus seven. And it's now at minus 1.2. What? All right, let's try that again. So, now we're looking at the minimum voltage because it appears to be going negative on a regular basis. And maybe that's easier for you guys to see. So now let's turn the voltage back on to where we know it's going to pop it. And it goes negative seven. Brilliant. Okay, it works. Turn it off. And average. Is that current? I reckon that's current as in at the moment. So on, drops down to minus seven, off. Sweet, okay, that still works. I'm confident of reusing this. Bloody beauty. Now the next question, if it's the same shunt in both fuses, this one, the 75 kilowatt hour pack, should go at a lower 
voltage because it's it's the same it's got a lower current limit but it's the same shunt so it will give the same reading per amp so let's try and um, hook all of this up so first of all let's turn this back on and bingo it goes again but let's turn the volts down am I showing you anything useful on the camera there we go 0 0.05 it turns off again so let's turn it right back down to zero let's take these guys off of here let's take these guys off of here You can bugger off over there. You need your computer, so it's the computer I actually want to try. And you can lean against there. Sorry, folks. You can go into there. So, you guys, I'll keep the same orientation. Red into yellow, black into white and power goes into there and there ah come back here you bugger alrighty we should be wired up now So, bum ba dum bum bum on volts point one point two point three point four biff, and there it goes, yes lower voltage. Dude, it's almost like I know what I'm talking about sometimes. Off. Oh, did you guys notice that though? Looks like I've reversed the wires because now it's going to a positive seven. So I said I almost know what I'm doing. So there we go. 0.3 of a volt, 0.03 of a volt, sitting around happily, 0.04 of a volt, and that is 0.01 or 0.02 less than on the 100 kilowatt hour pack. Brilliant! Alrighty, that means that I am putting the 75 kilowatt hour fuse onto the 100 kilowatt hour electronics. Um, and then I'm putting it into this 100 kilowatt hour pack, which I'm then putting into my car, which was sold as an S60D. Um, we've already upgraded to an S75D by having a friendly hacker from overseas go in and change the setting for free, which Tesla would normally charge you 10 grand for. Um, we've uncorked it so we can use the most current but it's still not fast enough because you've only got 14 modules in your 75 kilowatt hour pack so you've got a lower voltage so now we're going to go to 100 kilowatt hours which also gives us 16 modules so nearly 400 volts not nearly 350 and more current ability the current yeah shouldn't really change things anyhow blah 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 it works how cool is that